Welcome everybody, my name is Mr. Lama and today I am bringing you a TVZ. This is being tween EG's to Muslim spawning up in the top right hand corner and spawning down in the bottom right hand corner. We do have Acer Nurtio, our blue Zerg, and it is going to be Tall Dream Altar and something to note. This version does have the rocks. This is a slightly older replay before I believe Blizzard got rid of the rocks, um, which they actually do, and I'm, I'm not sure everybody knows that or they did, but in the n latest ladder version, there are no rocks at the third, so it makes it a little bit more Zerg friendly map, of course, because you can go s just go over there and take that third base um, a little bit better, I would say, for the, er, and as well, yeah, I'd say probably for the. Uh, for the Zerg player, it's mostly beneficial. And look here, there's actually a little gap right there. I do believe that units can get through. I'm not quite sure that's a complete wall off right there by the Muslim. So, possible that he did that on purpose. Possible um, that it's an accident. Or possible that that actually does block off and I just can't tell because it's, you know, hidden behind all this stuff. But, of course... Uh, I'm going to imagine the Muslim has a game plan in mind, something he knows he's going to do. Maybe he's just going to block here and then he'll wall it in back here or something, or right up there. Or, I don't know, because here we see, yet again, he's leaving more space. So maybe he's just not too worried about a complete wall off at this point. Regardless, Nurcio, really big congratulations for winning DreamHat Bucharest. Um, and going 3-0, I believe, over uh, Zerg's Acer Bly, or Acer Bly uh, the Zerg player, who's his teammate actually. So Acer went 1 2 in that, and Nurtio was able to uh, take the game, or take the uh, tournament, I should say. So congratulations to him. That was just seven days ago, I do believe, something like that. Um, but this game, of course, is a tiny bit older than that, I do believe. I can't give you an exact date of when this is. Uh, I just try and catch replays when I can find them and stuff, and it can be so difficult to find good replays sometimes. But uh, I heard I heard some decent stuff about this one, so I was like, you know what, I'm just, I found a great replay here. I'm going to go ahead and cast it um, and before anybody else does, right? You know, So got to be the first one to it. So spawning pool now going down for Nurcio, and it looks like very standard openers here from both players. We're going to see a one max FE. Uh, from De Muslim and Acer Nurtio opening up with that 15 pool. We'll have to see when uh, and if he's going to be taking a fast third base. And that's kind of been uh, something that's been back and forth. I suppose he couldn't take it here, but of course with the positions he could take a fast third base down there, which is possible on this map simply because, sure, it can be a little annoying, um, but with the Terran player all the way over here, he really has to travel a long distance around there. And if you just keep vision on this watchtower and stuff, you can catch him kind of in transition over to your third base. Uh, of course, though, if he were over in this position, it would be a lot more difficult because he'd just get over there and have to, you know, could easily siege up right here. Regardless, though, the Terran player is still has the better positions on this map simply because it's not cross positions, right? So Zerg players on this map love it when there's cross position simply because that allows for all that space. It's so difficult for the Terran to get over here. Uh, but when they're just playing like this, I mean, the Terran can easily, easily just start moving out this way. He's got all this protection up on the high ground. And then the next thing you know, he's right here at this watchtower, which is a very short distance, basically, from no protection to watchtower. And then he's very close to the ramp to your base. So it's usually a pretty simple siege to just go from... Uh, place to place right there, and so that's where a lot of Zerg players kind of have difficulty on this map uh, dealing with the turn like that. So it looks like the Muslim, who accidentally built his command center in the wrong place, not a big deal, lift up, replace, and then of course get an orbital, I would imagine, and look at this going for very, 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 very fast three Cs right here. So greedy play, but I mean, if you look at this, we're going to have to see something out of Nurcio, I would imagine, off of two bases, because otherwise he is simply going to fall behind. Yes, he's, of course, ahead in the worker count at the current moment, but as soon as these three Cs, Cs start producing, plus you have to take into account mules, um, which are just going to be so beneficial here when he does have them down, of course. Uh, so once he starts dropping a few mules out of the three command centers right there, or the three orbital commands, it could be bad news right there for Nurtios. He's definitely going to fall behind in the economic position. And it looks like instead we just see Nurtios sticking on these two bases right here, getting up a double extractor, and now just taking his third. Um, so pretty typical standard timings for that, I'd say. Uh, a fourth one's usually taken around this time or a little bit earlier. So the third and fourth ones uh, are probably a tiny bit later, which of course will allow him to get out more drones and such, but he will have have a little bit less gas for later on and no lair yet i suppose he's waiting till he does get that hundred gas 
which is why a lot of times you'll see it a little sooner. But I would imagine he's going to be grabbing a lair very shortly. And there we go. There goes the lair. Uh, because, yeah, if, if if you're not grabbing a lair at this point and not taking a third base, it's like, what exactly are you teching to? Maybe, you know, could try for like a roach ling all in or something like that, I suppose. Which could have actually been very, very effective in this matchup simply because uh, DeMuslim took that third command center so early. So, I mean, if you say, oh, hey, you know, if there were roaches and banes heading over here in, in a couple minutes, what would DeMuslim have? Uh, he would have one bunker with a few marines, uh, half a wall, and a couple, you know, uh, reactor hellions out. So, really, that would have been a very effective uh, push or move right there. But instead, it looks like he's just going to try and kill these rocks down here so he can head over and, of course, take a third hatchery. Um, so it is going to be a late third hatch, and we'll have to see what ex what the tech is going to be here. It looks like he's throwing down a Roach Warren and a Bane Nest. So is he actually going to try for some sort of little Roach Bane harass right here, possibly? I don't think he's scouting as his opponent's... No, he has not scouted his opponent's man at all. He doesn't have an Overlord even really close, uh, which is surprising. A lot of times you'll see Zergs have, you know, Overlords right there, so he can just easily... And now we see it queued up um, with an Overseer. But yeah, so you can easily just kind of get in and check out the barracks, of course, see everything that's going on. And here we are now going to see... Uh, Nurcio try and uh, continue to get these rocks down while dealing with all of the Hellions right there. And really quickly, I actually do want to change my sound settings. I feel like it's a little loud. I'm not sure why. Alright, so I'm just going to lower that down. Oh, it's because my volume's all the way on max. No wonder. Okay. I saw just lower the volume in my ears then. That should be a little bit better. But yeah, so it shouldn't be too bad right here. It looks like he's going to be able to get the rocks down. And really, I mean, we're going to have to see what exactly he's going to be doing off these two bases. We don't see any sort of... Uh-oh, uh uh-oh. Need to be careful with these Hellion run buys here. All the drones are lined up right there. He needs to be so careful not to have those burned away. It looks like the Muslim was actually a little bit away uh, from the Hellions there for a second. But he's going to be able to return and go for huge kills right there. How many drones have gone down. Simply 13 at this point. Going to be probably a couple more right there. Nope. So just going to have the 13 for the four Hellions. Pretty even trade, you could say, right there. And the units lost tab a little bit more for the Zerg. Um, but that could have been extremely bad there. And the only nice thing was Muslim got in here and took a couple shots at the Spore Caller initially before he pushed around to then start poking away at the drones. But had he, init had he immediately gone for those drones, that could have been very bad for him. So it looks like Nurcio is going to run up here with these Lings, uh, misses the Lings at the, or the Marine at the Watchtower, and now, of course, is going to go over here to check out the third base, I would imagine. Additionally, grab control of this Watchtower, and a Banshee over here, does he have Cloak though? No, he does not. Cloak's not even being researched right here for this Banshee. So it looks like Nurcio going to grab three free Marines right here. No immediate danger at his third base. No immediate danger anywhere. Uh, and the Muslim is just gearing up for a big, big, big push, I would imagine, off these three bases here. Look how many barracks he has right there. So he's got... I don't think I have all the barracks selected. I think I'm missing one. There we go, I do. So seven barracks a uh, with reactors on four of them. Possibly five, six? Nope. So three tech labs, four reactors, tanks, medevacs. I mean, he is gearing up to have a massive army here in a little bit. And a push right there could be deadly to our player, Nurcio, who's been investing uh, decently in his upgrades right here. Going to be getting that plus two very, very soon. As soon as that finishes up, you know, he's just waiting to click on that. He was at least. Uh, I guess he missed it there. But the roaches and uh, or the roach one, the bane nests, everything's down right there. But he hasn't made anything except now he's going to finally start pumping out some lings. Will he start morphing some banes? Possibly going for some bane binds. Look at this. He does have a uh, burrow on the way. Pathogen glands as well coming out of his infestation pit right here. So he, I would imagine uh, we might be seeing burrow banes in this game, which would be so amazing. I love watching burrowed bane lings just decimate an army and that's somewhat the zerg in me and that's somewhat just watching massive amounts of damage so it looks like we're gonna get a little run right here he's gonna at least force a stim lose a couple zerglings nothing wrong with that i mean i love the uh attempt at least to get in there and try and harass these svs back here so he's not gonna do too much he needs to be careful though to not lose all of these lings right here and looks like he's just gonna actually run them back into this part and uh go ahead and just hold position there try and pick off a couple scvs before he's forced to leave again, and now he's able to get a few burrowed links in there, actually. Did the Muslim see those links burrow, or could that be a problem later on, of course, as the links are moving out? Here, it looks like he's actually just going to unburrow them now, so he'll be able to start picking off some SCVs, getting in there, starting to start picking at the turrets. Uh, and I guess that's so he can simply burrow more links. So he will kill the turret right there. No links to actually burrow, and another turret is going up. 
And finally, those lings do get uncovered right there. How many? Only two SCVs killed. Sad, sad days for Nurcio. And now here is that scary army I was talking about. Ford the Muslim, it's going to start pushing out, at least get it gathering itself in the middle. And I mean, so many barracks with all these reactors and tech labs right here. Needs to not be supply blocked, of course. Uh, but five supply depots on the way to deal with that. He's got all those upgrades. Some more links going to run in here to the third base. I like this decision right here because he knows he simply can't engage this army at this point. Needs to be careful, though, not to lose too many of these investors while at the same time trying to distract his opponent. And look at how many workers he's able to now pick off right here. And there is not too much that looks like the Muslim has to deal with this. A couple units right there streaming in. But at the same time, you have to look back at this base and see how much damage uh, the Muslim is doing right here and it looks like Nurtio actually came out for a decent surround. Huge fungal growth does go off right there. Gonna get another fungal growth. Not gonna be able to actually kill off all these units. A third one goes down so a lot of the Marines actually will die right there and with the reinforcements here from the Lings it might be enough. He's gonna need a few more Lings to pick this off. It looks like he might just have them right there. I'm not sure it's gonna be enough though with all the medevacs overhead. It's gonna be very close and yes it will actually. So he's gonna force a pull up and now look at this 25 workers killed all of a sudden, so he killed 23 workers in that little counter harass, and I mean, as a, oops, wrong one, excuse me, as a uh, Zerg player, that's exactly what you have to do, you know what, you see this massive army pushing over towards your base, you have these investors, stall it out a little bit, drop some fungus out there, morph some banes, get some hits, do a little bit of harass, but really, in the meantime, you gotta be doing stuff back at uh, the Muslim's base, because if he has all those workers, all of a sudden he would have had 20 more workers right there, he would have been in a great position, and now the game's a lot more even after that. So well, well done right there um, by him. And I still am waiting to see the Burrow Banelings. I haven't seen any yet. Look at this. Also denying the fourth base. Just trying to be annoying as ever. The Muslim over here. And I mean, run by is everywhere, right? So the Muslim pushes out. And now he's going to run by right here. He's going to head over once again to this mineral line. Going to start picking off some more units. Going to get a tank. Going to run straight into the main. Uh, and then, of course, even more links here to pick off Marauders. Everything is just so hectic right here. Burrowed lings forcing scans, I mean, just being as annoying as you possibly can. And all the while, this is allowing him to establish his fourth base to go ahead and grab a fifth base. I'd imagine Hive Tech, here we go. He's got the Spire coming up now. He's got his 3-3 underway at this point. Um, he's got the Adrenal Glands about to finish up. So just doing everything he can. And once again, he's going to push over into this mineral line and continually pick off these SCVs. And yes, he's going to lose a lot of these lings right here. And that's a little bit sad, but he's actually going to actually... Uh, escape with some. It looked like he had a free path there. Instead, he didn't. It looked like he was trying to sneak some more lings in, actually, while well, these lings headed over to their death, of course. So he picks off the turret, forces yet another scan, and like I said, he's just delaying. Needs to be careful not to lose too many lings um, during that time, during that little engagement right there. But at the same time, it would just be so annoying right here, and just picking off little by little. Uh, tearing apart the Muslim's army wall. He can grab this Greater Spire back home, grab these Corruptors, and if he can get up to the Infestor Broodlord army, that is so difficult for Terran players to deal with. And do we see any sort of reaction uh, to this Greater Spire? I don't think he knows about it, but as a Terran player, no, he doesn't know at all. He has not scanned much whatsoever. But as a Terran player, you have to kind of expect, even, and I mean, this is even late at this point, but you have to expect Greater Spire coming out. So you'd have to start preparing with Vikings. You have to start preparing with plus uh, air weapons here out of an army. It looks like he's simply sticking to the plus vehicle weapons instead. So I'm not sure I quite agree with the Muslim's uh, approach to this at this point. Looks like instead he's just opting for this really, really, really heavy three base, just getting four base, and there's the Bane Bombs that we love to see. Did I jump away during that? I almost want to go back just to watch it because it's so beautiful uh, to just actually watch. So here we're going to see a little bit of a surround coming in from Nurtio. He's going to try, but no, he's going to actually back off of that, say, you know what, not worth it. And uh, now he's going to finally push in. The tanks are not sieged up. Is he going to let them siege? It looks like he will, so I'm not quite sure I really like that um, from Nurtio there, as now he has to deal with siege tanks instead of just tanks unseeged, which are, of course, a ton uh, less damage right there. And so it looks like he's starting to come in. Now he's going to go ahead and move in. Pulls back yet again. He's just throwing away Lings constantly here, and now there's going to be a decent-sized force that's going to be pushing up, and Nurtio is just going to run all of his Lings back to try and deal with this force right here, and we're going to see him slowly picking off a lot of units, but will it be enough? Broodlords are morphing though, that's exactly what he was waiting for, as now the Broodlords can start to push forward. He needs to be careful not to lose these Broods though, and I would imagine they're going to get focused down pretty soon, 
And here everything's going to start pushing forward. The tanks have unseized, and Nurcio should be able to clean this army up, it looks like, especially with the Broodlords overhead. And still no Vikings in production, simply on the medevacs at this point. So he's going to need to make this transition to Vikings really, really soon if he wants to survive against this Broodlord army right here. The Corruptor's going to head out, start picking off the uh, medevacs right there, and they're going to be forced to drop the tanks right there. So it looks like a nice little... Where's this force going? It showed me for a second. I didn't see the rally after that. Looks like they're going to possibly head down to kill off the 5th base. Yes, they are. There it is. So they're going to head right over to that 5th. And are we going to see any sort of defense out of Nurcio for that base? Looks like he's just going to run in here and uh, kind of lollygag around with those Zerglings. And now he's going to finally start heading over with some Overlords and some Zerglings. Not going to be enough. So he should be losing this 5th base, it looks like. As he really doesn't have much of a ground army whatsoever. He's simply stuck on all these... Uh, not that it's a bad thing, but a lot of Broodlords right here. And a lot of links in production. So look at the resources right there for Nurcio. Very, very, very surprisingly low. He's going to be able to clean up those Marines and should be able to go with those Marauders, I would imagine, in a little bit, especially with all these links right here. But uh, he still needs to be careful of any sort of... Uh push right here from the Muslim, though the Muslim, I suppose his army really isn't that scary at this point. He lost a lot of his army there in that push uh, up the ramp, and he wasn't able to really do enough damage. Now, Nurcio did throw away a decent amount of Lings in that fight, but at the same time, you have to remember, yes, while he did throw away Lings, it wasn't very... Uh, it, it wasn't very painful because he had the Broodlords right behind that were morphing. And here is where Nurcio really needs to be careful. He cannot lose his fourth base down here. If he loses this fourth base, that could be so deadly to him. He's going to need to pull back Lings immediately to get them down there to deal with this. And yes, it looks like he will before the Marauders even think about focusing, focusing down the hatchery. Instead, uh, he just picks off an Extractor and a Queen, so a little bit of damage done. And once again, he's going to be pushing over here. But with the Spore Crawlers and the Spine right here, that should give... Uh, Nurcio enough time to react to this and the Lings of course being pulled now and yet another Queen does go down though so a little bit of damage able to be done here by the Muslim um, gonna be as annoying as possible and now he's gonna of course gonna position his units in a very annoying way for the Zerg so they can't get this round immediately and so he kills off you know he's doing the little things right but overall I feel like right now we're seeing Nurcio in such great position look at all these Broodlords and uh, Infestors that he's got right here I would imagine though that he's gonna want to get more Corruptors and yes we can see three four on the way because now we see the Muslim starting to really react to the uh, Broodlords there. So he's got four starports, all of them with Viking production, so five Vikings at a time, and that's going to be huge right there. And I would also really like to see an Ultralist stand if we do not have one down for Nurcio. No, it doesn't look like we do, so he's simply going to stick to his um, Broodlord, Infester, Corruptor armor right here, and he's really just going to have to land some key uh, chain fungals on those Vikings because there is a decent sized number of Vikings out right here, and they're now going to start pushing forward a little bit. Need to be careful though, not to get envisioned there as you might see uh, Nurcio, and there he's now going to start spreading out the Vikings because he realizes ah, hey, maybe I shouldn't leave those all grouped up in a giant ball for the Infestors to just have a, a uh, fun time dealing with. So the Ultra is Dan now coming down here for uh, Nurcio, and it looks like he is already prepared for any sort of drop here from the Muslim. And look at that reaction time. I mean, that is just impressive, right? You you don't see that uh, out of out of lower league players or even a lot of pro players. That was so immediate. As soon as they got right there, he was already reacting to the drop. He's just he, he sees everything. These players are so good at this level. And so now it looks like we're going to see Nurcio finally starting to push out. If he can get over there to deny that fourth base, he's already got that fifth base denied and that sixth base. Uh, with the Zerglings right there. So just the little things, of course, but he needs to be careful. And how is he going to deal with all these Vikings right here? That's going to be the big question. How many brute Corruptors does he have? He has 10 Corruptors, but there are 15 Vikings out on the field, so he really needs to be careful. It looks like now he's going to start pushing forward with a few units. Additionally, there are a couple Thors on the field, and we have Hunter Seeker Missile also in production right here with the Raven, so it's not going to quite be out in time, and it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a stem forward right here, and there's going to be a small engagement, and I feel like this is definitely favoring Nerf at this point he's gonna be able to do a decent amount of damage and it's really he's got the he's got the up the hill advantage he's got everything that he really wants at this point I would imagine he's gonna be able to start remaxing on Lings right behind this infested Terrence being thrown out he's also getting some nice fungal growth the Vikings really aren't doing any damage to these Broodlords they're just focusing down the Corruptors in front and Nurcio is just going to absolutely crush this army right here 
So the Muslim losing 70 supply while Nurtio losing a decent amount but able to just instantly remax on these Ultralisk and these Zerglings. So he's going to go ahead and make the tech switch and we'll still see Vikings here at the Muslim which are going to be pretty soon useless. Uh, and I mean, wow, Nurtio in such a great position. I'd really like to see him start pushing up towards this fourth base with these Broodlords. Um, but I suppose he's waiting for some reinforcements on the ground, of course, as he does not have much at all to deal with the Vikings. He's got five Corruptors right here, and now it looks like we're going to see uh, Demuslim try and push out with a little bit of a troop here to deal some damage. And Nurtio just going to absolutely run away with this. Not even going to use his Corruptors to try and pick off these Vikings whatsoever. He's just going to keep running and losing Broodlords, so I'm not quite sure I like that. I feel like he could have definitely turned these Corruptors around and used them. And finally, there he's now going to do so. And now we're going to start seeing another engagement. All the Ultralisks are just going to be so big in this engagement. There's not many units on the ground right here for the Muslim. He's going to start sacrificing SCVs, it looks like, or possibly trying to send them over to another base. And they just run in a terrible route. Yes, he was trying to send them to the fifth base, but they run a terrible route right there. And so now Nurtio is starting to get think about pushing in. He's got a lot of Banelings on the ground. He's also got the Broodlords right here. So many Vikings up in the air, and it looks like most of those Broodlords will be going down fairly, fairly shortly. So they're going to do whatever they can. Ling's now starting to stream in with the Ultras and the Banes right here. Will the Muslim be able to hold this? He's able to do a decent amount of dam damage actually at this point as Nurtio is very back and forth. He's not really committing to anything whatsoever. So the Muslim is able to really start to uh, regain the supply lead. Or not regain it, I should say, but even it up at this point. And Free and Fester is running out across the map right here. Nurtio losing two Infestors, possibly a third, yes, and a fourth Infestor for free, so they did absolutely nothing in that battle except run out and blow up, and I mean, right there, when you have no bank whatsoever, those are huge, 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 huge Infestors to be losing, that's four Fungals, uh, and you know, of course, once they regain energy even more, that could have gone down. Mules getting picked off over here. So that's probably been one of the best parts of Nurtio's play. It's just being so annoying with those extra bases. So uh, his ability to just deny the extra bases whatsoever. So to Muslim has yet to get down this fifth base. Um, and of course, he's going to have trouble taking that pretty much anywhere. He's blocking it over here. And now it looks like we're going to be seeing engagement here in the middle. Nice little split right here from the Muslim. Is it going to be enough? Huge fun growth goes down. The Banelings going to roll right into that army. Some Vikings overhead going to get chain fungled anyways. Why not just kill off the supply? And uh, at this point, he's going to start pushing forward. It looks like even more. Some more Lings and Banes headed over here to the Marauders right here. The Ultra is doing great damage as they continue to push forward. And the Muslim going to be forced to fall... Uh, back into his base, but once again, he's able to push Nurtio back a little bit. It looks like some Infested Terrans being thrown out. And once again, another uh, Infest right there is going to go down. And finally, with a little Burr right there, he's going to be able to save one of those. But, I mean, look how much damage we're seeing out of Demuslim right here with just two Marauders right there. He picked off one Ultralisk, almost picked off a second one, just kiting them. And now it looks like he's going to try and do the same. And Nurtio just going to run right in with the Lings, not even going to allow him to do any sort of micro whatsoever. He's just going to start attacking everything, heading in. Fungal growth going down on all these medevacs. They're all dying right there. And now we see Nurtio continue to push in. I'm not much, I'm not sure how much longer the Muslim can really hold on at this point. He's trying to land Vikings, trying to do everything that he can. And the Muslim says 300 style, which uh, I'm supposing this is his little uh, Spartan force standing in the choke right there as the massive, massive amounts of units try and stream in for the Zerg army. But unfortunately, they're unable to really do too much. Some units loaded up in a medevac. Not quite sure what that all is all about. I guess he's going to go over here and try and drop at one of these bases. Uh, and uh, trying to pull another 300 style in the choke right there. Not going to be enough till it looks like. And that's going to be it. GG well played out of the Muslim and Acer Nurtio proving why he is one of the best foreigners in the world. Able to take this game. My name is Mr. Lama. I hope you guys enjoyed this cast and I will see you guys next time.